Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new day. It is uh, Tuesday, still morning. It's 11.50 in the morning and uh, making lunch right now. And we are having peanut butter and banana sandwiches. So I'm making Glenn's right now. He likes his on a roll, mine on a on just regular bread. So that's what we're having for lunch. And then after I eat, I'm going to make that sombrero salad. Probably should have got up earlier to make it. But anyway. So another Vlogmas day. I think this is Vlogmas day 13. Which is, well... This is Tuesday that I'm recording, so when you see this, it'll actually be the 13th, and it'll be my birthday. All right, so that's the peanut butter and banana sandwich on a roll. And Glenn uh, usually likes a couple slices of ham with his. Okay, that's it. That's his lunch. Mine's just going to be a regular bread, no ham. And that's what we're having for lunch today. All right, everyone. So I am going to make the sombrero salad now for tonight's supper. So... It's already going to be one o'clock, so I need to get to making this. Um, I made this like two months ago, and in that video, I talked through the process of making it. So it, I'll leave the link to that video in the description below if you want to watch me talk through it. Through this video, um, since I'm kind of in a hurry to get it done, I'm just going to end. I want to listen to my Christmas music. So I'm just going to play music through this one. All right. So if you want to watch me talk through it, watch that video from two months ago. But what you'll need is some ground beef, uh, Western dressing. I know some of you can't find Western dressing in your area. Uh, you might want to try like Catalina dressing or Russian or combination of some salad dressings. Uh, red bell pepper, some sliced uh, black olives. Rotel noodles, some taco seasoning, uh, cubed up, uh, I got extra sharp cheddar cheese, and some fresh tomatoes. So that's everything that goes into it. So I'm going to get my ground beef and red peppers going because I'll let that simmer a while uh, before I make the noodles. Okay, so again, watch the other video if you want to watch me talk through it or listen to me talk to it. Otherwise, I'm going to play music on this one. All right, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, so um, the noodles are almost done, the Rotel noodles for the sombrero salad. Meanwhile, I've been chopping up stuff that I uh, picked up at the grocery store yesterday. 
So one, isn't this colorful? <laughs> but over here are the tomatoes cut up for the sombrero salad. And the bell pepper pack, the three pack that I picked up, I only used half of the red one for the sombrero salad. And I didn't chop anything up yesterday, so I figured I'd do it while I've got the cutting board out. And I took all the bell peppers, all three colors, uh, diced some up, and left some in strips. And I separated into two different stacks of each one so we can get the most out of, out of that $3.99 that it cost to buy all three of them. So we'll be able to use the bell pepper. We're already using it for one. And we'll be able to use it for four more meals. So, so trying to stretch that dollar and get the most out of our, our uh, food. So I'm going to freeze them in little packs. So that's going to be four little packs for four different meals. So that's what I've been doing while I've been uh, making stuff for the sombrero salad. And uh, yeah, so now I'm going to package this stuff up and freeze it, put it in the freezer. All right, everyone, so we are ready to mix this all up. As you saw, I ran it through the cold water, so it's all cold. Now I'm gonna grab the taco meat with the red peppers. All right, so let's give this a mix. And so I've got the tomatoes here. I've got the cheese here. The olives, uh, I'm not going to put in because the can we had, I opened it up and they looked discolored and they tasted bad. So... I'm not going to throw those in here. <laughs> and that's the only can we had. So, uh, yeah, we'll be minus the olives. But I wouldn't put too much in anyway. Um, so I'm going to throw the cheese in here. And now the tomatoes. Um, I know that's not a lot, but we'll see. Because uh, I know Glenn doesn't like a lot of cheese. All right, so now we are ready to put our Western dressing in. Now, we have tried it before with Catalina, and we did. It, it was okay, but it, it wasn't like the same. <laughs> of course, it's not going to be the same. Uh, we definitely prefer Western dressing. And as I said in the previous video where I made this, I don't put a lot in initially because if you put too much in, then it, it all just falls to the, the bottom and it's sitting in a pool of dressing. We just add it as we go in our own plates. So let's give it a taste. Try to get a little bit of everything in there. I'll put a little bit more in right now. Other than that, it is done, and I'm just basically going to, 
I'm not going to let it simmer. I'm not going to turn the burner on. I'm just going to cover it and let it sit there until we're ready to eat tonight. And hopefully these flavors come together in this amount of time. I should have got up earlier this morning, but oh well. It doesn't always work out. <laughs> All right, so that is sombrero salad. Uh, last time I made this was two months ago. And then before that, it was six months. And before that, it was a year. So so as you see, it's not something we make often. Um, the Western dressing is an acquired taste. Uh, but when you're eating it the first night and all the flavors are in, or the second night, the best thing to do is make it the day before. Like I said in the previous video, make it the day before, eat it the next day, and the flavors should all come together. And that's the best time to eat it. And I also mentioned you don't want this hot. Uh, one, it'll melt your cheese. Lukewarm room temperature, maybe a little warmer than room temperature. Uh, heat it very lightly. And yeah, hot doesn't taste good. So, all right. So that's our sombrero salad. I'm going to let it sit. And uh, I don't know what I'm doing next. So, <laughs> okay, everyone. So I am in the craft room and... I want to do a Christmas project. So it's, uh, I'm using my old Prego jar. It's a pasta sauce jar, spaghetti sauce, whatever. And it has Prego pretty much uh, engraved and it's raised. So what we'll do with that in a little bit. So the bottom of the jar is a little lifted to the inside. So it's not flat. And I want to make a Christmas scene. So this is my my thought process of this Christmas tree. And I got this at, oh, I think it was Joann's or Michael's when Michael's was here. And this was a after Christmas sale. So it's already got ornaments. I've got a real big one like that too, actually, two of them. But my thought is I'm going to put snow at the bottom so I have this uh, what's called faux snow I have a big bag of it as well but might as well start with a small bag and you see how the tree tips because it's it raises up inward and my thought is to make like right there and then put a second tree a smaller one in there somewhere. I don't know if I have smaller ones like this. Well, I do have smaller ones like that. So let me take these out. So anyway, my thought is to put the two trees in there and then put Santa in there and he would go over there with the two trees and with the snow like it's a snow scene but i have to make that area flat so let me take this uh these trees out yeah these were all an after christmas special or sale i've had these for like three years maybe <laughs> so i kept some of the styrofoam from glenn's airplanes and if I could find a, a piece to cut and put down there so it stays level, I'm going to try that. So the other problem with that is because I'd like to make it as round as the jar, but the lid is smaller than that. So, all right, so I'm going to try to work that in there and see what I can fit in there so I can get my stuff on there. All right, so I'll be back. Okay, so I've got styrofoam cut down and it's sitting in there, but what I wanna do is take it back out somehow and uh, hot glue the bottom of it and then try to set it in place so it doesn't move because right now it moves and then we'll go from there. If I can actually, yeah, once I do that, then it'll be easy to, I think I'm just going to end up with one tree, I'll see, or maybe a tree and 
a real miniature one. So let me try to get that styrofoam down, glued down, and it should be easier from there. <laughs> As you can see, I got quite the mess here. Okay, how I got it down was I just took a knife and kind of poked it. So I just poked it a little bit. And let's see if I can get it out. Oops. <laughs> Let me get it on its side and that'll be easier. So I got it on its side now. And now it's easier. So I want to hot glue the bottom. And see if that works. Now on the jar, we have on the sides and maybe it's just me uh, being a little anal but there's seams right here in the jar right there and on this side so I want the picture to kind of be up front here yeah so this is the side I want my pick my uh, seam to face all right so I think uh, I have this big vase which I have another project for but that's gonna be on another day and actually, this styrofoam, if you want to take the time to break it all up, it comes out as little pieces that could be your uh, faux snow also. It's so staticky, though. Let me see if my hot glue gun is ready. Sorry about the lighting being so bad. I'll try to get, I'm gonna to try to do better lighting in here. All right, let's try the hot glue gun. Oh yeah, it's ready. Okay, so I'm gonna hot glue the bottom of the styrofoam here. All right, now, hopefully I don't mess this up. I got glue on the side of the jar. Well, since it got on this side, I'll have to make this side my face, so. We'll just let that dry. See, it's uh, it's not moving. All right, so before I start gluing the tree and Santa down, I kind of want to see where my placement is. I am going to cover that in snow, obviously. So, try to get my tweezers and see where Santa's going to be. So now that tree actually, because it's on the styrofoam, it goes to the top and it actually looks too big now. So I'll get the smaller version of that tree. That looks much better. And then just picture that with snow in there. Okay, so I've got my tree and my Santa placed where I'm going to glue them down. And then once they're glued down, we're going to throw some faux snow in there so it'll look like a snow scene. All right, so let's do that. And I'll just hot glue the bottom of each item. So I'm going to put my tree down first.
All right, got my tree down and it's sticking, but I'm going to let it sit. Now I'm going to hot glue Santa. Yep, he's stuck. <laughs> All right. So I got my two items hot glued. And now we want to put in some snow. And I'll be using this stuff here. I'm just going to try to cut one corner of the bag so it doesn't go everywhere. All right. Okay, I might have to cut it off. everyone so there is my winter scene I've got enough snow where I uh, just swished it around like that to cover up the styrofoam and uh, so you see Santa's got a little deer there but this is the way it looks all around this is where this the glue smeared in the inside where I was putting the styrofoam down but I'll end up using this side I'll put a little bit more in so I could cover the stuff here. But I got some in the back I can use in the front. <laughs> there, that's better. So it helped that that piece of styrofoam was in there so I didn't have to fill the whole thing up. It's basically on the sides and on top here, so that's good. It covers the, the stand that Santa's on, the white piece, even though it's supposed to be like snow. But yeah, there is my snow scene. And now we got to figure out the top here and uh, see what else we can do with this. All right, everyone, so I've been kind of toying with what to put on the top here. And I have this pack of greenery sticks from the Dollar Tree. And there's like 12 of these sticks in the pack. And I, got, I probably got them like three years ago. And uh, so what I was thinking, I just cut some small pieces off. And I thought to do something like this. And then I also have these red little red berries from the Dollar Tree and maybe take a little cluster of them and glue them there. So I would hot glue these on and then hot glue the berries on there. That's what I was thinking. I wish I had like mini miniature pine cones. That would be great right there with some red berries. But that's what I was kind of thinking. I guess uh, 
let's do it and see how it looks. <laughs> Once it's on, it's on. I'm kind of trying to cover up the prego here. Then I can snip off a couple pieces of these berries. Just kind of like put them in the middle here. Kind of like that. Oh no. Ah. Oh. Damn it. All right, so I don't know if I should glue the ends down or bring them down a little bit. I'm gonna leave it like that and you let me know what you think. Maybe glue them down like that. But that is my little Santa snow scene in a jar and now the lid yeah, I kind of, <laughs> you saw that, uh, the berry with the hot glue slipped in my finger and kind of burned a little bit. <laughs> yes, I have those finger protectors, but I think they would be hard to uh, handle the things, but that's okay. I was able to slide the berries over. Yeah, a miniature pine cone would be perfect in there. Now, this is... This was my thought for the lid. I would paint it uh, the chalk paint white, the snow white. I would paint this. But I have this. These are from the Dollar Tree, yellow lights. What I would prefer probably is uh, fairy lights because they're not as thick as this. And the battery pack is compact where I could possibly glue the whole thing in there. But let me turn out the lights and show you kind of what it would look like. Okay, so if I had the top on and somehow was able to get them in there, it would be a little light up snow jar or a uh, Kind of like a waterless snow globe, but you can see that yellow light there in the scene there. Once I would have that all glued down, I think that would look really nice. So, what my thought with the fairy lights is, if I glued the styrofoam to the lid, I could bring the lights down lower glue the whole light there or the battery pack can be glued there. I'll have to figure that part out. So I'd like to do it where I don't have to have the battery pack on the outside stringing to the outside, but all I would have to do is untwist the lid and the battery pack is here. 
and I would just have to unscrew it and change the batteries. So that battery pack for the fairy lights is much more compact than this, uh, this light. But you can see how nice it would look all lit up in there. Wonder how it would look with just the lights thrown in there. No, I don't think I'd like that. <laughs> all right, so let me turn the lights back on. Okay, so there is my uh, first ever attempt at a snow scene. And uh didn't come out too bad. Yeah, I'll get better as I go. <laughs> but I think once I have the lights on underneath the lid to light it up, I think it's really going to look nice. So there it is, my Christmas project for today. My first ever, everything I'm going to be doing is my first ever doing it <laughs> so it's not going to be perfect it's there are a lot of great crafters out there i'm just be, really beginning at it on at this stage of it i'm usually like a digital crafter <laughs> or something um but uh yeah now that i got uh jumped into it i think it'll be a lot easier for me now and i can do more projects i have I have another jar like this, but I showed you that big vase. I have another idea for that. And what I want to do for another jar, I'll, it's too much to explain right now. <laughs> I'll explain it when I'm ready to do it. But there it is, my Christmas so snow scene in a jar. <laughs>